So this first problem is very interesting because it has an example of exponential growth and <clears throat> exponential decay. Okay, um, I'm going to make this bigger. See if it's still readable. This is the um, for a particular business. This is the supply curve. That is, um, this is the uh, formula or the function that describes a particular product. Let me get blue. That describes a particular product and how it can be supplied to a company. And that's the price, okay? So at a particular price, there's a company, um, a wholesaler, that, that can ship this many items to um, a, a retailer. Now, on the other hand, this is the demand curve, the function that describes public demand. And it is a decay curve. That is, demand will go down as supply increases. Like for instance, there's an incredible demand for toilet paper right now because there's a toilet paper shortage. But once Walmart and other stores start having big supplies of toilet paper again, the demand for the toilet paper will go down and people will start just like buying it every two weeks again. So, um, this describes that kind of thing. But notice that the K number is negative for the demand curve. Whenever your K number is um, negative, that shows exponential decay or going down. Whereas when K is a positive number like this over here, it means that uh, uh, there's increase going on. Now, here's what we're supposed to do for this problem. The supply function, this, and the demand function, this, for the sale of a certain type of DVD player are given by these two formulas where S of P is the number of DVD players that the company is willing to sell at price P, and uh, D of P, this, is the quantity that the public is willing to buy. So it's the company that, it's the retailer, it's the retailer here that is, is supplying the DVD players and what the public is willing to buy, and it's all dependent on a particular price, and the price actually is dependent on the supply. Well, um, okay, at a particular price, yeah. Now, it says find P such that D of P, this, equals S of P. That is the demand and the supply equal each other. That's called the equilibrium price. And it's very important in economics. So if you're going into bank banking, you're probably going to have to take an economics course eventually. If you haven't already had it. All right, so we are going to set this up the way they say to set it up, and that is D of P equals S of P. Now, D of P is 480 times E to the negative zero point, and I'm just going to put point zero zero three P. There are already too many zeros. S of P equals 150 
times E to the point zero zero four P. And what we have to do now is solve for P. But now we know the secret weapon. We can bring P down out of the ex out of the exponent if we use a logarithm. And since there's an E in the equation, we're going to use the logarithm called the natural logarithm, which is ln. So I'm going to take the ln of the left side and the ln of the right side of the equation. 480 times E to the negative point zero zero three P equals the LN of one fifty one hundred fifty times E to the negative no no that one was negative over there um to the positive point zero zero four P. Okay. Nick Barber. Yes. Um, are we confusing both of the both of the numbers? I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the positive number goes with 480. Or was I wrong? Um. No, I was wrong. Yeah. But hey, always speak up, right? <laughs> it's hard to keep all this stuff together. All right. Now, uh, we have. 480 times e raised to a power, and we have 150 times e raised to a power. This is in the argument of a logarithm function, and this is in the argument of a logarithm function. So, we're going to use the product rule to rewrite this, ln of 480 plus ln of e to the negative point zero zero three p equals the ln of one fifty um I was telling my phone to be quiet. I think it probably needs more than that like being turned off. LN E of E to the point zero zero four P. So there, and let me write beside here that that was the product rule. For somebody coming along later and reading this, so they'll know. Okay, now, I'm going to use the power rule. On, um, you see, we, ha we have a power, e raised to a power here and e raised to a power here. So that's where I'm going to use the power rule. So I will have ln of 480 plus, negative point zero zero three p times the ln of e which is one yeah okay and we're going to have the ln of 150 plus point zero zero four p times the ln of E, are you ready? It's one. Yes, it's one by gum by golly. Okay, so now here's what we have. The ln of 480 minus, right, we have plus a negative number, so minus point zero 
P, and that equals the LN of 150 plus 0 0.004 P. And now I want to prove something to you. So we're going to get this. Don't, we're, I'm not going to write it down because I'm not ready to use them yet. But I do want you to see that the LN of 480 is just a number. It's six point, it's about 6.2. Don't write it down though, though, not yet. But it's just a number. It's not a variable, it's just a number. And the same thing is going to be true for the LN of 150. The LN of 150 is an ugly number, but it's not a, a it's not a variable, it's just a number. Okay, so it's important to realize that because I have two variable terms here the terms that have the P, and I have two terms that are just number terms. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as if I had something like this. Um, let's say six minus, minus three P equals five plus 4p. This is just made up, okay? But you know what your next step would be. You would probably add 3p to both sides of the equation. No, you wouldn't do that because you're a very smart young lady. And whoever else is here is much too smart to do that. So... The whole purpose would be to turn that into a zero over here. So we'd have six minus zero. And over here we would have five plus seven P. And then we would subtract the five over to where the six is. Well, we're going to do that right now with this slightly uglier equation. Since this is just a number and this is just a number, this is a variable term and this is a variable term. My next step is to move this variable term over here. Okay, and I'm going to do that by adding 0.003p to both sides of the equation. It's what we always do to variable terms when they're on both sides of the equation. So I haven't done anything that hasn't been done 50 million times before at least. Okay, so this is zero. Okay, uh, negative 0.003p plus 0.003p is just zero. So now what I'm going to have is the ln of 480 equals the ln of 150 plus 0 0.004 plus 0 0.003 is 0 0.007p. And that's where I'm at right now. Now over in our model, we have six minus zero is six equals five plus seven P. What you would do without thinking twice is you would subtract five from both sides. So five minus five is zero. That leaves us with seven P. And then six minus five is one. 
we're going to do exactly the same thing. Since this is just a number and this is just a number, I'm going to subtract the LN of 150 from both sides of the equation, except I'm going to do it this way. Minus the LN of 150. So that the L of one, the LN of 150 minus the LN of 150 is zero because any time, any time you subtract something from itself, you're going to get a zero. And you'll be left with point zero zero seven P. Over here, we don't really know what those are yet, but let me write it out. The LN of 480, whoop, minus the LN of 150. I have a logarithm minus the logarithm. And they're the same exact kind of logarithm. So I'm going to use the um, quotient rule quotient rule and rewrite this as the LN of 480 over 150 equals 0 0.007P so that in solving for p over here we have a number equals an, a number times p and we're going to divide both sides by the number in front of p and you always do that when you're solving an equation so i'm going to do that here and now we're going to have p equals whatever that is. Okay. There we go. Whoa. Okay. So let's go up and see what the answer is. 166.16, do not round until the final answer then round to two decimal places as needed. Okay, here's decimal place one, here's decimal place two. This four will not go up to, will not make the six go up to a seven, so we just get rid of those. And our answer is going to be one sixty-six. Point sixteen, which is what my math lab says, so we agree. Woo! Woo! Yeah, woo! And it looks impossible to do. Look at that first line. That is just so ugly. But if you just take on faith to follow the steps, everything will be okay. So what we did was we set these two, these two functions equal to each other. Then we took the ln of the left side and the ln of the right side. Then we used the product rule on both sides of the equation. Then we used the power rule to bring down the powers, the exponents. Then we rewrote what we had left. And then we proceeded to get the numbers together on the same side and the variable terms together on the same side. You know, really, these are constants, so it would not be incorrect, even though they don't look like constants, to say we got the constants together on the left side of the equation 
and the variable terms together on the right side of the equation, and then did, did really normal stuff to come up with the equation, with, with the answer, the solution. There you go. 166.16 is this, the rounded solution which is what my math lab was looking for. It's approximate, it's not exact. If they had asked for the exact answer, the exact solution, it would have been this. This is the exact solution. Because to get, to get this solution, you have to round and you lose some numbers but this goes on forever. So you could never include all the numbers that go into making um, the ln of 480 over 150 divided by 0 0.007. And that's the story of our first problem. Okay. Yay! All right. Want to discuss it? Uh, no. Uh, no. Thanks. Okay. Then we are going to go to a real radioactive decay problem, and this is based on fact. Um. Now we're going to talk about a woolly mammoth or mastodon. Um, the radioactive element carbon-14 has a half-life of 5750 years. Now, what this means is, okay, let's get the formula, the basic general formula for exponential decay. Should I write it here? Formula... for exponential decay. A equals A naught E to the KT. Now your book says negative KT, but I disagree with that. Because if you leave it like this, then K automatically becomes negative. So we're just going to do it the way it should be done. K is called the decay constant. T is time, but here it could be time in seconds, in minutes, in hours, in years, in centuries, in, in uh, um, millennia. It can be anything the scientist says it is. Okay, so T is just time. For banking problems, T is years. And for business problems, well, T could be months or weeks. Now, it's only with banking problems that T must be years. For other kinds of problems, the problem has to tell you. OK, so this is just time. By any measurement. A naught is the original amount of whatever it is you're measuring. Or rid or rid no goodness gracious. More coffee, more coffee. Original. Amount. The 
the story tells you what the amount is. except here it doesn't. And A, oh, but not A zero, just A, is the amount after a long time, or after the decay, the amount after the decay, amount left, let's say that. The amount remaining, oh, that's nice. I didn't turn. Oh, I didn't turn my phone off. I'm going to do that right now. Am I going to do it right now? Yes, power off. Oh, I feel better already. Okay, radioactive element, carbon-14 has a half-life. What is a half-life? Well, as you're going to see in this problem, half-life half-life, incidentally, is the way that most um, radioactive substances, whether they're medicines or whether they're uranium, um, it's the way that that their strength, their enduring strength is discussed. So anytime you see a radioactive substance mentioned, usually the half-life is mentioned as well. Well, what the half-life is, is when the remaining amount is half of what you started with. So that would be one half of the original amount. That's the amount you have over here. That's what half-life is. And that's what we're dealing with. There are some interesting, there is an interesting discussion of half-life over here. It's not a discussion, but with a table. Uh, for instance, polonium. Oh, how about lead? Lead has a half-life of 10.7 minutes. Iodine, must be radioactive iodine, has a half-life of eight days. Krypton has a half-life of 11 minutes, 12 minutes. Uranium has a half-life of 9.1 minutes. Plutonium has a half-life of 24,100 years. Plutonium is what's used in hydrogen bombs. And, I, yeah, yeah, in, in hydrogen bombs. Those are the really bad nuclear bombs, if you can call any of them good. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We've got this carbon-14, and it has a half-life of 5,750 years. A scientist determined that the bones from a mastodon, one of those woolly elephants that existed during the uh, the Ice Age, had lost 67%, 67.5% uh, of its original carbon-14. All of us have carbon-14 in us. And when there aren't a lot of volcanoes going off, putting more carbon into the atmosphere, then that carbon-14 decays at a, then the amount of carbon-14 we have in us tends to stay constant during our lifetimes and generally constant for everything living. And then it decays at a, what under most circumstances 
is a um, predictable rate. So that's how scientists tell or try to tell how old something is. Is they measure like this, this mastodon, they find a mastodon bone, they measure the amount of carbon-14 in it or in a section of it and compare that. Well, they know that 100% of the carbon-14 would have been in the in the mastodon when it was alive. Once it died, though, it, it stopped taking in carbon-14 from the air and from plants and, and from other sources of carbon-14. So the carbon-14 started to decay. Um, and that's what they're saying here. They found a mastodon bone and the mastodon had already lost 67.5% of its original um, um, percent of carbon-14. And what was that? Well, it was the 100% when it was alive. And then after death, it starts decaying. Uh, the body decays and the carbon-14 decays also. So, originally, our mastodon, mastodon dead, mastodon dead, mastodon alive, This mastodon had 100% of its carbon-14. Okay, but now it's already lost 67.5% of its original 100%. So how much has it got left? because A here means the amount remaining, not the amount it lost. So these are trick problems. Most people are gonna go with 67.5%, and it's not what the problem says. It says it has lost 67.5%. So to find out what A is, the amount remaining, that's gonna be 100%, minus 67.5%. Okay, now what we're being asked to do is this, is to find out how old the bones, how old were the bones at the time they were discovered? So this is actually a two-part question. The first thing we have to do is we have to find K. You can't do anything until you find K. So, we're talking about half-life here. Radioactive element carbon-14 has a half-life of 5750. That's going to give us our K. Almost always, you find the K of your formula by using the half-life. So, here we go. The formula for half-life is one-half A naught. That's half the original amount. Equals A naught E to the KT. But we do know the half-life and it's 5750 years. Now this is right. 
OK. One half A naught equals A naught, the original amount, times E to the 5750 K. All right, now we divide by the number in front of the E. That's always what you do once you get your equation. If there's a number there, you divide by that number. If all you've got is A naught, you divide by A naught. And now one half equals E to the 57. 50 times K. Now we take the LN of both sides. So we're going to have the ln of one half equals 5750k times the ln of e, which is one. one. Yes. So the ln of one half equals 5750K. And I will divide both sides by 5750. And that's what your K is. Now there's a problem. It's a minor problem. But it's a problem. With this problem. And that is. Getting the answer you need to get in my math lab for my math lab to call your answer correct. You need to know exactly how many places to round the exact solution for K to. How many places are we going to round to? Well, let's go look. All they're asking for is the year of the bone, or the, the years old that the bone is, or how many years ago it died. Um, it says the radioactive element carbon-14 has a half-life of 5750 years. A scientist determined that the bones of a mastodon had lost 67.5% of their carbon-14. How old were the bones at the time they were discovered? At no time are you told how many places to round K to. This is a problem. You can't just say, well, I feel like rounding it to four decimal places. Because if you don't round it to the exact number of decimal places my math lab wants, you will get the wrong answer. Therefore, at the moment, we cannot find the exact, I mean, that is the exact answer. We cannot find a calculator approximation, but at least we've got the exact answer. So what we're going to do here is we are going to keep in mind that all we have to do to get K is use this. We know what K is. We just don't know what it is in the calculator. So now there's no problem, believe it or not, there is no problem. Because we don't really need the calculator approximation. We are now able to find out how old the bones were when they were discovered. And now here's what we're going to do. We're going to use A equals A naught
but now we're going to use it with the second part of the problem. A scientist determined that the bones from a mastodon had lost 67.5% of their carbon-14. How old were the bones at the time they were discovered? Okay, well, we need to know what was the amount of carbon-14 remaining. 100% minus 67.5% is 32.5%, which translates to 0.325. So the amount of carbon-14 remaining in the bones, which is what A stands for, is 0.325 times A naught, which is of A naught. 32.5% of A naught is 0.325 times A naught. Equals A naught, E to the KT. So now I've got this. Now, I am going to divide both sides of the equation by the number in front of E, which is A naught. K, we now know, remember, K is down there. We know what it is. So it's not a variable anymore, it's actually a number. Just thought I'd tell you. Okay, the A naughts cancel out. What we're left with is 0.325 equals E to the K, which we know, times T, which we don't know, but that is going to equal, we hope, 9,324. We don't know that yet, though. So I'm going to take the ln of both sides of the equation. So that will be the ln of 0.325 equals k, which we know, times t, times the ln of e, which is one. one. One, and will always remain one, I hope. So now, this is what I've got, the ln of 0.325 equals k times t. I know what k is. So to find t, I'm going to divide both sides by k. Over here, the k's cancel. So now, here is what I know that t equals. The ln of 0.325 over parentheses, the ln of 1 half divided by 57. 50. And I put the extra parentheses in there because that's what we're going to need when we calculate that answer. Here we go. LN 0.325. Close parentheses. Divided by parent LN 0.5, close parentheses, divided by 5750, close parens. Enter. There, there. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? All right.
there now. All right, now we go up here and we see if they actually told us how many places to round the answer to. Round to the nearest integer, whole number. So we're going to look on the left side of the decimal. This is the nearest integer. Well, it's an integer. Now I look over to the right to the five, and the so that will give us 9,324. Yes, it will. Okay, we are now going to talk about radioactive half-life. The answers that we're going to be looking for are in blue boxes. So it stands to reason that what we already know, the, the given information is right here. These are the given times. These are the given Ks. And I have done the first four problems for you to help you get a feel for how to conquer half-life problems. All right, here is the first equation, the equation you start with when you're doing a half-life problem. This will make sense when we talk about what A is in this general decay formula. A is the amount remaining. A naught is the amount you start with. So this is remaining. With half-life problems, And then I'll put start right here. With half-life problems, the amount remaining after a certain amount of time called the half-life is half the amount you started with. You don't have to know how much you start with. All you have to know is that after a certain amount of time, 36.7 minutes, for polonium and 10.7 minutes for lead. All you have to know is that however much you started with, only half of it remains. So these are the first lines in your equations, the equation you'll use to solve the problem. Now for these first two problems, you're told what the half-life is, the number of minutes. What you aren't told is what is K, and you must know K. The most common method used for finding K is to use the half-life. All right, so come on down here and we'll start. For A, polonium, after this much time, 36.7 minutes, you will have half of the original amount of radioactive material in polonium as you started with after 36.7 minutes. Let's take that 36.7 and put it in front of the K, since K is acting like a variable and we're solving for K. And we're going to do what we always do when we solve a growth or decay problem. We're going to divide by the number in front of E, the original amount. So A naught divided by A naught, the A naughts cancel. And A naught divided by A naught, the A naughts cancel. 
So you are going to be left with one half equals e to the 36.7 k. I have to move that k down so I can solve for it, so I have to use a logarithm. I have to take the logarithm of both sides of the equation. The ln of one half equals the ln of e to the 36.7 k. This permits us to move the exponent or the power down. This is the power rule. So there it is. The ln of one half equals 36.7 times k times the ln of e, and the ln of e is one. So 36.7K times one is 36.7K. So we have the equation, the ln of one half equals 36.7K. To find out what K is, we divide both sides of the equation by 36.7. Now we put this in the calculator the ln of one half divided by 36.7, and that will give us negative 0 0.01888684442, and that number actually goes on forever. But we're going to change this to a percent, and when you change this number to a percent, we only use a positive number for the percent. That's because this is used in sentences. Polonium decays at 1.887% per year. Actually, we're supposed to round to four decimal places. So this is going to be, this isn't quite right. Let me rewrite this. We move the decimal point two places to the right when we want to change a decimal to a percent. So we're going to have point, uh, 1% and the decimal part is going to be one, two, three, four. And the six, I look over at the eight, the eight is going to cause the six to round up to a seven. So our decimal places are eight, 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 seven, 1.8887 percent. Again, the K must be negative because this is a decay rate. Now with B, our first equation is going to be one half A naught equals A naught times E to the K times 10 points. That's because lead also decays and it will have half of its original amount left 10.7 minutes later. radioactive lead. Okay, so we're going to write this as one half A naught equals A naught E to the 10.7 K, because we're used to putting the number in front of the K. Then divide both sides by the number in front of E, which is A naught, leaving us with one half equals E to the 10.7 K. Then we take the ln of both sides so we can move this power, this exponent down in front. The ln of one half equals 10.7K times the ln of E and the ln of E equals one.
So 10.7 times K times one is 10.7 K. I skipped a step here. We divide both sides by 10.7 to find out what K is. So divide both sides by 10.7. And that's how we get the ln of one half over 10.7, which is the half life. K is going to equal negative 0 0.064780 So we move the decimal point two places to the right. That will be six point. Now one, two, three, Four, four, seven, eight, zero. The one will not cause the zero to go up to a one. So that's how we get this percent as our decay rate. Remember the decimal form has to be negative, but the percent is written as positive. And also notice this, that on both of these equations, when we were given what the half-life is, but we have to find the K, the, the, um, this will always equal the ln of one half equals the time we know times K, so that to find K, we have to divide both sides by T. And so a quicker way of finding K, only, only when you're given the half-life, is to use this formula, the ln of one half over the half-life, which is T in this case. So we don't actually have to go through all this when you're dealing with half-life and you know you're dealing with half-life. You can just write what the ln of one half over T equals K when you're given the half-life. So let me make a note about that. Given the half-life. Which is time. It's a certain amount of time, a specific amount of time. When somebody knows what the, when a researcher knows what the half-life is, it's very easy to find K just by using this formula. But you don't have to use the formula. If you don't want to have to memorize one more formula, it doesn't take that much energy to go ahead and start with the general formula for exponential decay and then write out all the steps. OK. Now C and D, we have to find the half-life when we're given K. So this is a somewhat different situation. A equals A naught E to the KT is the general formula for exponential decay. Our first line then is going to be one half of a naught equals a naught e to the kt. And we divide both sides by a naught, so we're given one half e, one equals e to the kt. And we know what the kt is. I actually could have put it in up there. Negative 0 0.0866. Here's, here's what we're given right here. 8.66% per day is the decay rate. And if we change this to 
to a percent uh, to a decimal, it becomes negative 0 0.0866. And that's what we're using down here. K is negative 0 0.0866. And since this is K times T, we've written it this way with T at the end. Now to find out what T is, I take the LN of both sides. The LN of one half equals the LN of E to the negative 0 0.0866 T, 0 0.8, uh, negative 0 0.0866 T comes down in front it's multiplied by the ln of E, but the ln of E is one. So that leaves us with negative 0.0866T equals the ln of one half. I divide both sides by the number in front of T. 0 0.0866, negative. And negative 0.0866, Negative 0 0.0866 um, uh, cancels out over on this side, leaving me with T. So T equals the ln of one half divided by negative 0 0.0866, negative 0 0.0866, which is K, by the way. And you put this in your calculator, and this is the number you come out with. We're supposed to round to four decimal places, so one, two, three, four. This zero will not cause this zero to round up to a one, so our answer is, for T, is 8.0040. And we look up here, that's the number of days it takes iodine, radioactive iodine, to decay to half of its original amount. I had to take radioactive iodine when I was a kid, and I had my thyroid uh, mostly removed. Okay. Now, D is almost exactly the same. Here we're, gi we're given the Krypton. Oh, where is Superman? Krypton will, um, uh, has this K, this decay rate, 6.0% per minute. And um, uh, so when we change this to a decimal, we move the decimal point two places to the left and make it negative because it's a decay rate, not a growth rate. And we're supposed to find T. A equals A naught E to the KT. That will give you one half A naught equals A naught E to the negative 0 0.06 T because that is the K we're given. I'm going to divide both sides by A naught, leaving me with one half equals E to the negative 0 0.06 T. I take the LN of both sides so that I can bring the exponent down in front. And now we have that LN of one half equals negative 0 0.06 T times the LN of E. And that's E to the negative 0 0.06 T. Okay. Divide by negative 0 0.06 on both sides. And what you're left with is T, the half-life, equals the LN of one half. divided by the K, which is negative 0 0.06. So I put the LN of two, 
ln of one half rather, the ln of one half divided by 10 points up, negative 0 0.06. I put that in my calculator and what I get is positive 11.5524530 and I'm rounding to four decimal places. One, two, three, four. This five will cause the four to go up to a five. So my half-life is 11.5525. Let's make sure that's right. Ah, down here, whoo, 11.5525 minutes. When you're given the half-life, that is given T is the half-life. You can find the K, the decay rate, by taking the ln of one half and dividing by the half-life. When you're given the decay rate of a substance, You can find the half-life, or actually anything you want, but in particular, the half-life will equal the ln of one half over the k that you were given. Now this is just for half-life, but it can be really helpful. <clears throat> 